Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godschalk, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today, I am delighted to be joined by Daniel Costa, who is from Archaia, and we are going to talk about Archaia's partnership with Google Cloud and what they are doing around the growth of applications um, for the Hedera ecosystem. Hi, Daniel. How are you? Hello. Hi, Zenobia. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. I know it is late your time. Um, I believe you are in Hong Kong. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah. The, the bright lights and, and bright city of Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone else has gone home, but we appreciate you sticking around to, to join this podcast. No problem. No problem whatsoever. <laughs> it's always, always a pleasure. So tell us a little bit about Archaia and your role there. Sure. So Archaia is an enterprise grade infrastructure service. And we also provide a comprehensive suite of, of tools and APIs. We specialize on the Adara protocol. Um, we are a small company, so core fundamentals are getting the right people, so tech first, and putting our clients first. And also, as we move along and, and grow, having an honest, transparent relationship with our roadblocks and progress as a platform and service. Um, my role in Archive, I'm currently the CTO for Archive. And as what happens with many startups, I wear many hats. So from typing code, reviewing code, uh, client-facing team management, digital strategy, and, and also setting the milestones and deliverables on, on the tech side and coordinating uh, stakeholders with tech development. Fantastic. And, you know, there are lots of DLTs that you all could have chosen to focus on. Why did you pick Hedera? So our solution requires fast, secure, low-cost DLT because that's really what our clients need. We, we focus a lot on, on B2B cases and enterprise uh, use cases. So with our Kai, our goal aligns with many of those in Web3, that is to see projects with real-world utility and making large-scale impacts at a global level uh, that expedite the adoption of Web3. So uh, these projects will require performance, reliability, and security benefits that Adara provides and hopefully in the process as well, leverage Archaia so these projects can reach their full potential. Right. So all of the things that, you know, enterprises have come to expect from their traditional compute infrastructure and applications, I think you are starting to see them say, hey, I expect those same things from Web3. Exactly. And uh, I think that, you know, it just made sense to Archaia to combine efforts also with uh, Adara and Google and, you know, being that, that critical synergy to actually bring these use cases to life in a meaningful way. And so how did you get engaged with Google? So uh, that was from BCW. So BCW has been working with Adara uh, to bring aboard uh, infrastructure and companies from other ecosystems. And there was a consistent request for a, a secure, reliable mirror node as these companies needed dedicated RPC services, uh, which was not always you know, feasible or available by the available public services. Um, so BCW worked closely with THF and Google uh, to build out what is known today as Archaia. And that's how it came to life and support all the builders in the market uh, and have a fast mirror node service provision in the market. Um, this has been of immense value because it also uh, helps us to make educated decisions as we go forward. So as we scale and tackle these wider challenges of reliability and, 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 and wider use cases, so we make most educated decisions as we go forward. And, you know, I think a lot of folks know that mirror nodes exist, but I don't know that outside of the people who are using them, they really understand what they are being used for. So can you, you know, without maybe naming names, can you share some examples of how people are um, are using mirror nodes? Uh, sure. So you can think about uh, financial services, the centralized exchanges, um, or uh, ESG uh, um, uh, companies that as we move forward and have uh, Adara bring in these DLT solutions, uh, the mirror node consists of basically distributed data that exists in this uh, ocean of distributed nodes. And due to the consensus algorithm from Adara, it is bulletproof in terms of uh, immutability, in terms of availability, in terms of timestamps. 
So, you know, thinking about a decentralized database that you can trust in perpetuity uh, and, and being consistently available. So uh, as we move forward to data being more and more relevant in today's world, I think you can see how uh, across the board, as we all rely on technology more and it's just so intertwined with in our lives, uh, we want to make sure that we, we can trust on the transparency of that data. And, and, and that's how all just comes together. And, and MirrorNode is basically the core of that service. So when you, when, when you try to query data from the Adara consensus, uh, from the Adara protocol, uh, that is the key point where all that data is pulled and, and you can, and you can check, you know, the, both the historical state and just the most recent activity on the DLT systems. Yeah, so it's really coming back down to sort of the essence of crypto in the sense of, you know, cryptography and, um, you know, secure computing and trusted computing, um, where you can prove that what people said happened actually did happen in the order that it happened, when it happened, et cetera. Exactly, which goes versus a centralized service where there's just a lot of caveats and and other types of feature, other types of, um, of situations where maybe that cannot be fully uh, transparent. And as that importance of that, of that comes, comes trickling down and having a direct impact in our lives, this just becomes more and more important. And so tell us a little bit about the relationship with Google Cloud and how that has um, developed and what you all are, are offering today. Sure. So we have a close relationship with the Google Cloud team and we sync up over key decisions when we decide to bring a new service on board and, and apply the necessary strategies for scale and performance. So, um, when we make decisions over, let's say, DB tuning, low latency, uh, published subscribe systems, thinking about real-time notifications and streaming systems that we want to bring to the protocol, um, uh, all of these and even feature key tools like BigQuery, uh, these can all be done with the guidance uh, of the best in their field, which is Google, right? So uh, as we move forward, we think, okay, is this the right way to do this? Should we, you know, should we, should we do that instead? So it really helps us to not put start making bad decisions from day one. So as we gonna move forward, we know that we have the best, you know, the, the people that actually build the services that we rely on right there, handshaking us throughout the process. And that just gives us that sense of really security that we're bringing that type of key grade infrastructure to, to the market. Okay, I wanna shift directions a little bit now. So I'm gonna have you put on a different hat in your role as CTO. You know, you've talked a lot about what you all do for customers and how you work with partners. Um, what has it been like, you know, uh, developing on Hedera? And, you know, if you were to go back and tell yourself um, six months or a year ago, what kind of advice would you give to developers and others who are, um, you know, thinking about, hey, how do I build distributed applications? And Right. Um, interesting question. Yeah, I think for me, uh, especially one thing you have to understand is Web3 is, can be a bit of a wild west. So there's <laughs> a bit right in lack of better term. So it's just constantly changing and evolving. So I think it's kind of like embrace the chaos of the process. <laughs> and if, if I can say so, and just embrace, we're all like curious tinkerers. We're all explorers and, and think about with that kind of journey, just think about a project that you would love to do on web three. Think about something that would drive you. Uh, be a pro I, I, Personally, I've, I've always found that's the best path for me to, to get something and learn something is actually being project driven and, and having that passion through. And then through that process, understand what type of web three tools and what type of technologies you need to achieve your goal. And what I would say to people is that me personally, I can guarantee that Adara has the key tools uh, to do what you want in a simple and very powerful way. Um, and hopefully if you wanna also come and create an account with us uh, on Archive, you can get your development on Rails from day one and we help you scale as you move forward. So we've also done a lot of work in terms of uh, workshops and videos and articles and documentation. So anything that you need to say, hey, how can I achieve this? How can I do that? Uh, we're really trying to be like a, a helping light uh, also in the Adara ecosystem where, where people are trying to achieve their goals. Yeah, and I think, you know, you mentioned scalability. I think that is a really important thing to think about. When you start out, you know, you sort of envision 
I mean, I think most entrepreneurs I, I have spoken to, you know, hope to be the next big thing, right? They hope to be the next unicorn. They hope to grow their business. Nobody's like, eh, I just want it to sort of stay little and unless it's sort of a pet project. But I think when you're thinking about that, you probably want to think about how can my application scale, right? If I am as successful as my wildest dreams, what does that mean that I need from my underlying DLT? And what does that mean I need from my whole underlying stack of infrastructure? Yeah, I completely agree. It's sometimes you have a great idea, you have a, and all of a sudden it just starts to catch fire. You start having, you know, excitement and momentum, and then you just realize the building blocks behind you are just not enough to help you to receive all of that, all of that volume and traffic. And then you're like, you know, it, it's very easy to actually push that problem to the, to the end of your life cycle of your product. Uh, right. We see that all the time. We see people sometimes <laughs> jump, jump into us and say, Oh, by the way, like, you know, we're, we can't get our requests or the, our infrastructure is failing, you know, can you help us? And that's why also one thing that we try to do is that we are an infrastructure provider, but we try to make tools and, and, and guidance from day one. So, you know, we always have free accounts, so feel free to come in and we can probably help you to kind of get that development started. And when you scale, there is no problem because then you will be, you know, uh, tied in or, or, or uh, direct access to our infrastructure and with the auto scalability that we've done and being battle tested throughout uh, the, the time that we've been, then you don't have to worry about that part. So when the time, I think when the critical time comes and, and really that key moment where your application really shines, you don't have to worry about what's happening in the background. And, and that's kind of what we want to we wanna do and help. Fantastic. So as we look ahead, what can folks expect to see from Archaea in the next, say, six to 12 months? Six to 12 months. There's a, <laughs> That's like uh, three years in Web3, it, it's right? It's three years in Web3. <laughs> That's so true. And because I used to work for a bigger company, and it's like we think in years. And here, like, it's like all three months back. Oh, my God. Do you remember? That was that was a very different time. Right. Um but there's there's a lot of things we're excited. Uh, I think you can expect an augmentation of our current APIs. Uh, so a lot of more work and solidification and expansion. So we have you know the native APIs. But we've also been working on streaming APIs and other types. So higher emphasis on streaming. So I think and real time notifications. So I think that's something that's coming in and it's becoming more more relevant. Uh, also contract smart contract based utility tools and APIs and also wider GraphQL support. Um, and those things will be coming in. We're, we're actually on a very, um, you know, uh, exciting and, and aggressive building stage. So we've been solidifying the core product, but I think now these things are going to come out and just make the Archai ecosystem bigger. So hopefully everyone that wants to develop on Adero will find something that is that can help inside Archai. That's very exciting. And I know, you know, I've heard rumblings of folks who are, um, poking around or asking for that kind of functionality. So I'm sure you will have people coming and knocking on your door. I do hope um, so, yes. Yeah. Well, Daniel, thank you for joining us today. Um, if people want to learn more about you, where should we send them? So they can reach to me under archaia.io and find me at daniel at archaia.io. So like we said, we're very, you know, we're fundamentally a team of coders, builders, you know, and we're always welcome to receive feedback, crazy ideas, suggestions. You know, it, it's it's obviously a very flat and uh, hierarchy company. So, you know, feel free just to reach out and would love to see also the 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 criticism as well. So, you know, we do want to see where our Kaya platform shines, but also where it's bad. Uh, so we continue to evolve. So, you know, feel free to reach out. Right. That's the only way to improve. Daniel, thank exactly. you so much. And we hope you will keep us posted on your progress. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anna. Thank you for having me. And um, I'll see you. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much. Yes. For, hope for to time. see you soon. Bye. Bye.